take a cushion or whatever you'd like just to support your spine you don't have to have anything this fancy but just a nice bed cushion works out well so bringing the soles of the feet together and just finding a place that's really comfortable for for the body today so there's no need to have it super close to the body or super far away just a nice comfortable place to rest in and then we'll slowly just begin to walk ourselves onto our back so either your back is pressing into the earth or onto a cushion I'm just going to let a couple more people into the class just while you get yourselves comfy. And once we arrive in our first pose on our mat, I'll just invite you to bring some gentle awareness to the body in this moment. The best way we can begin to access the present moment at any point is through our breath and for a moment I just want you to place the hands one hand onto the belly and one hand onto the heart and before we begin this place of acceptance I'd like for you to just bring yourself into a calm and grounded state of mind so without any need to force the breath just a gentle inhale all the way up filling the lungs and exhale, just a sigh and soften the breath out through the mouth. <sighs> Inhale, fill the lungs with air and fill it, lift the shoulders. With an exhale, feel this real sense of release and letting go. Once again, inhaling as we fill the upper body with air. And on the exhale, a big sigh, let it go. Now we're just gonna begin with some abdominal breathing. If you came to the class on Saturday, you might have already done a little bit of this, but if this is new to your practice, it's a way of us redirecting the breath to deepen our directional path of our prana, which is also known as our breath and our practice. So we're gonna to start to inhale down into the belly and just visualize this baby balloon in the stomach. The exhale gently draws the belly button back to the spine. Inhale, start to expand, open the belly. And exhale, just draw it back in towards the spine. Now just continue like this for a couple of rounds. And what you might notice is that you don't feel any breath down in the belly and it still feels as if we're breathing into the heart. Now this practice today is about accepting where we're at in this current moment. So that any need to pressure ourselves to really find that sensation just feel, and eventually the breath will come. Now start to move the, be the breath up through the belly and the ribs, so kind of two thirds of the way of the upper body. Exhale from the ribs and squeeze it out from the belly. Inhale, belly, lower ribs, upper ribs, and fill it up to the lungs and the chest. Exhale from the chest, the ribs, and finally the belly. Now find your rhythm, just expanding this breath open, imagining this whole upper body chamber with a little balloon just filling every crevice with air. And now I'll invite a little bit of fire into the breath. And at any point, feel free to uh, extend the feet to the end of the mat or bring the knees back together if this is too much for the legs. Otherwise, see if we can open the mouth for this breath now, inviting that fire. And if you're finding this really challenging, remember compassion and acceptance. Acknowledge how you feel. And just one more breath like this, expanding the whole upper body with air. And then the exhale, let go of the breath. Then when we're ready, Take a moment just to bring the knees back together, bringing the knees about hip width apart just to soften the lower back into the earth. And take a moment with the legs just resting to observe how it feels to have just checked in with presence at the start of our practice. 
how it feels to have deepened our breath. Maybe the deepest breath you've taken today. When we're ready, gently just begin to wiggle the knees from side to side. And a gentle little massage for the lower back. Then take the hands to the backs of the thighs. Option here to come, just turn on your side and come to seated or to take a little rock forwards and backwards, having a little bit of fun as we just open up the length of the spine and eventually coming up to a seated position. And seated could be any version of comfort for you. So it might be, be the legs crossed or you might be sitting on your knees. For today, I'm just gonna sit on my knees. And um, we're just gonna bring ourselves into a tiny bit more breath work before we begin our practice. So just bring the hands to the knees and begin by softening the eyes. Take a moment to plant this seed of acceptance for where we're at today. And just feeling the body gently aligning the spine, head over heart, heart over pelvis, and a subtle little lift through the crown of the head. And just before we begin our physical practice, I want you to observe how you're feeling today. That can be physically, emotionally, just one word without any stories attached to it, just a little word. And the inhale, expand up through the crown of the head. And the exhale, just let it go. Gently begin to draw the right ear towards the right shoulder. And exhale, slowly begin to roll the chin across the chest. Inhale, left ear to left shoulder. And exhale, roll the chin across the chest. Now keep the shoulders soft while we're doing this movement and just slowly begin to tap in to how you're feeling. Accepting that maybe the spine's feeling a little bit stiff today, the back of the neck's feeling a little bit tight. Every time we bring our minds to these sensations in the body, we are present. We are listening to ourselves slowly coming back through center we're going to inhale sweep the hands to the sky the exhale the right hand drops down towards the earth and slowly begin to walk left hand up and over the top of the body now the aim here is this lateral movement with the spine so try not to drop too forwards or too far back the sense of openness through the heart inhale come back up to center and interlace the fingertips so it's crisscross push the palms to the sky as you pull the belly button towards the spine Allow the shoulders to soften and glide down the back. Slowly reach the hands back. And with that space in the heart, see if you can interlace the fingertips behind the lower back. Now gently pull the hands down towards the earth. A little micro bend into the elbows helps to here. And just soften through the shoulders, maybe begin to open up through the heart a little bit. And then reaching the hands forward, interlacing the fingertips out in front. Push the palms away from you and start to look down towards your belly button. And you might even take a little rock from side to side, just opening up through the back body. Good work, guys. Back up to the sky. And then begin to drop left hand down towards the earth. The right hand's going to reach up and over. Again, that nice openness through the side of the body. But try not to clench through the jaw or through the shoulders here as there's a space. And that's the way that we use our breath today to find that little bit of space. Slowly come back up to centre and then bring your hands forwards, making your way up into a tabletop. So when we come through tabletop, just take a moment to maybe find your foundation, feel into all of these little movements, accepting anything that comes up and then see if we can just drop the right foot back behind you. So we're going to tuck the toes underneath and just take a little moment to invite some movement. Rocking yourself forwards and backwards, finding a little bit of space in the backs of the legs. Then when you're ready, start to bring the right foot off the mat, press it against an imaginary wall, and we're going to see if we can reach the left hand forwards. So I'm in a slight little cubby hole here, so I'm kind of cheating. <laughs> the rest of you, challenge yourselves. Otherwise, pull belly button to spine, find that strength in the core. The exhale comes, this elbow draws in towards the knee. 
Inhale, we lengthen and reach the foot away from the hands. Exhale, squeeze it in, hold there. Next, inhale, reach. And exhale, squeeze it in, hold the elbow to the knee for three, two, one. Lengthen it out. And then soften hands and soften knee down to the ground. A little wiggle of the hips from side to side. And then toes come together, knees mat width apart, start to drop sitting bones down towards the feet to find this nice length through the spine as the fingertips walk forward. Soften the forehead. And just take a moment, now we've added a little bit of movement into our practice to just acknowledge the natural rhythm of your breath. Whether that's still fast from a busy day or deep from the start of our practice. Just anything you notice. Any movement. Any sense of rising and falling. And then slowly gliding the body back up tabletop position. So we're going to do that movement a couple of times. The inhale, we're going to drop the belly and shine the heart and sink back table into child's pose. Exhale, we round the spine, start to look towards the belly button. Inhale, belly drops, and we go back to child's pose. So it's this nice fluid movement, this kind of circular movement with the body. Exhale, like we do with our angry cat, round the body forwards. Inhale, we curl the spine and come back to tabletop. I mean, child's pose, sorry guys. Close off the eyes and just find your fluid movement here, find your rhythm. And just find what feels good. When we're ready, slowly wave the body back up, tabletop position. Hands come back underneath the shoulders, knees back underneath the hips. And then when we're ready, we're gonna step the left foot back behind us. Tuck the toe underneath, and then slowly, just begin to rock yourself forwards and backwards, finding this nice little space in the back of the leg, which we're gonna be using quite a bit today, just opening up those hamstrings. When we're ready, press through the top of that right foot, see if we can lift the left foot off the mat. Now the tendency here is to let the back completely arch so see if we can use our core to really build that strength in our practice then start to reach right hand forwards when we're ready begin that little flow exhale elbow to knee inhale lengthen hand away from the foot exhale squeeze it. inhale reach and lengthen and exhale final round hold and squeeze for three two one, reach and lengthen. Feel that fire, right hand drops, left knee drops. Nice work, guys. When we're ready, hips stay stacked above the knees. We start to walk the hands to the two front corners of the mat, allow the forehead to drop to the earth. Take a moment to ground and connect to your puppy pose here. If the shoulders are feeling tight or tender today, acceptance for where they're at and acknowledging that the space of the body might need. How do we approach this practice with a more loving kindness at heart? Without feeling the need to compete or compare to previous practices or to others. Truly tap into what you need today. When you're ready, slowly begin to walk the hands back, tabletop position, and we'll make our way up into our first downward dog. So tucking the toes underneath, hands about shoulder width apart, and slowly bring the tailbone up towards the sky. So I always tend to teach in my classes a nice bend in the knees while we arrive, just to ease into the hamstrings. We're gonna need them today in our class, so just find a place of softness. Wiggling the nose from side to side, saying yes and no, and maybe pedaling out the feet a couple of times. And think about breathing into the backs of the legs today. Wherever you feel that tenderness, direct the breath there. And then let it go. Slowly inhale, rise up onto the balls of the feet. Nice bend in the knees. So we see if we can drop the heels a little bit down towards the ground. Inhale, we rise. 
and exhale we fall one more time inhale rise it up nice bending the knees as we slowly start to walk the feet towards the hands as you arrive up inhale look up and lengthen halfway lift flat back and using that little bit of core awareness that we start at the beginning of the practice pull the belly button towards the spine to find the crown of the head reaching from the sacrum and the exhale allows us to have a little bit more space to fold forward. Take a moment to just relax and release into the hammy. So taking hold of opposite elbow and a gentle little rock from side to side allows the weight of the upper body to do the work for you here. So gravity really is the only force at play in this movement. Now we're just going to take a moment to ease into the hamstrings. If this is too much for you, remember nice bend into the knees at any point. Otherwise, taking hold of your peace fingers and see if you can just wrap them around your big toes. And even if you're here, that's absolutely fine as well. When you wrap them around your big toes, just look up and lengthen a little bit more with the crown of the head and a little float forwards. Exhale. Inhale, look up and lengthen. And exhale, float it down. One more time, inhale up and exhale down. Release the hands down towards the earth. Imagine tucking an orange in between the chin and the chest as you slowly begin to restack the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Slowly arriving to Samasthiti or mountain pose. Okay, so once we arrive to the front of the mat, we'll begin our flow. To begin, just pay attention to the foundation, lifting the toes up off the earth, spread them apart and feel those inner arches lift in and up. Little micro bend into the knees and inhale, sweep the hands to the sky. Exhale, we begin to float our way down towards the earth, maybe bring the hands wide. Inhale, look up and lengthen, halfway lift. Plant the hands into the earth, step back into your first plank position. As we come to plank, remember at any point, if you're looking for a gentler practice today, just take plank on the knees. Otherwise, if you're with me here, just find a little foundation here, maybe just walking the hands from side to side a little bit. When we're ready, everyone dropping the knees. Shoot the bottom to the sky as you bring the chest and the chin just in between the thumbs. Hug the elbows into the sides of the body. Press through the tops of the feet, begin to tuck the tailbone underneath and slowly begin to lift the heart off the earth, low cobra. Exhale, rise back up, downward facing dog. And then take these moments to enjoy some subtle movement into your dog, connection back to the breath, connection back to the body. Right leg starts to reach up towards the sky, point the toes down towards the earth. With an exhale, hug the right knee in towards the chest and start to step that right foot to the front of the mat. So if that took you a couple of steps, that's absolutely fine as well. There's no hurry here in this home practice, but we're going to drop the back knee down. So you've got a little bit of time to prep for your first pose. And this is um, our low lunge. So just for some of you that are new to my classes, the best way to align it is just check that knee is stacked on top of the ankle. And what you want to be feeling is this big opening in the front of that left quadricep. Imagine the scissoring action as if we were trying to pull the right hip crease back and the left one forward. Reach the hands up to the sky. Now take a moment just to connect the fingertips that you're holding this little orb above your head and really extend the hands up towards the sky. Pull belly button up towards the sky and then see if we can start to exhale, take a little twist over to the right. And you should start to feel this big stretch across the left side of the body. Feel your way through the body. Make sure we're not holding tension anywhere. Check the jaw, check the shoulders. Then begin to release the hands down towards the earth. Slowly start to walk the hands back towards the body and we'll flex the front foot to find half splits. I remember we're easing our way into the hamstrings today so you can pop a little micro bend into the knee to start with. Now we're gonna flow from here to low lunge a few times, okay? So inhale, we reach the hands up to the sky. 
Exhale, we either drop the hands to the earth, or if you're looking for a little bit more fire, you can hover the hands off the ground. Inhale, we lift up and lengthen, low lunge. Exhale, we float our way back, maybe inviting that fire as we hover the hands. One more time on each side, inhale, lift up. And exhale, float it down, drop the fingers to the earth or maybe to blocks or books if you've got them in your practice. And as we draw the right toes towards our face, pull the right hip crease back towards the back of the mat. Inhale, lift up and lengthen. And again, float it down, exhale. Pull belly button to spine, lengthen through the crown of the head. Exhale, float it. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Slowly walk the hands back towards the front of the mat. Using that awareness of how we created that twist with the hands above the head and that orb shape, try and re recreate that in this position that we very easily just fall into habitual patterns in. So bring the left hand to the inside of that right foot and imagine um, turning from just the thoracic spine. So really thinking about stabilizing the hips and the exhale, we reach the right hand up but maybe not as far as we normally go. Think about where the breath moves without this need to force the body into a position, just accepting a more compassionate state in this body. Big breaths wherever we are. And then slowly dropping that right hand back down to the earth. Frame the foot. And either we step straight back to downward dog or step the right foot back to meet the left and move through a vinyasa with me. So either you drop the knees like we did before, or we challenge ourselves by shifting the weight over the wrists and maybe coming all the way down onto the mat. Press the tops of the feet as you hug the elbows into the ribs. Inhale, maybe a little bit higher into your cobra. Exhale, we all meet back up, down with facing dog. Remember at any point during this practice as well, the chance to listen to what, you, what you're feeling today, you can come to child pose. And just take it easy. Otherwise, when we're ready, the right, left foot starts to reach up off the ground towards the sky. We point the toes down towards the earth to keep those hips level. On the exhale, we hug the left knee in towards the chest and step that left foot forward. Start to drop the right knee down and just prepare yourself for a moment in your low lunge. So I think. Generally, we have this tendency, especially when we come into hamstring opening poses, to feel this pressure of maybe comparing to people around us. So I just want you to, in this opportunity to home practice, really feel into the way that your body feels. Maybe one side's a little bit more tender than the other. Just approach it with a more mindful attitude. When we're ready, reach the hands to the sky. Begin to connect the fingertips, reach the fingers towards the sky, Invite that scissoring action of the legs as we pull the right hip crease forward and the left one comes back, then feel that fire. Then slowly with your exhale, begin to twist the body over to the left. Still maintaining this length when we go through our twists, up through the fingertips, but a softness through the shoulders. Slowly drop the hands down towards the earth. And then slowly begin this little flow from our hamstrings to our hip flexors. So we find this half split, and then inhale, we reach up, low lunge. Exhale, we come back, half split. Find that movement meditation with your breath. Inhale, we rise. And exhale, we fall and ground. One more time, inhale, lift up and lengthen. And maybe you float it back on the spinal run, hovering the hands for a moment. Drop the fingertips to the earth. Now's your time to just direct a little bit of love into the hamstrings. Inhale, pull belly back to spine and lengthen. Exhale, float it down towards the left. Find this dynamic flow of breath, just two more rounds. And notice the quality of each breath as you explore it. Slowly begin to walk the hands back towards the front of the mat as you rebend that left knee, paying attention to how the body felt or the spine felt in that twist and inviting that sensation into this. So right hand just to the inside of the left foot and slowly begin to peel left hand to the sky, thinking about stabilizing the hips, 
and opening up through the thoracic spine. Big breaths wherever you are. Invite that fire. And then slowly drop left hand down towards the earth. So either we're stepping back downward dog or moving through vinyasa as we step left foot to right. Either dropping knees, chest and chin or moving through your chaturanga, either to cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a moment to just be here. We're going to be here for three breaths. You can drop into child's pose. You can stay here with me. But just invite a little bit of fun here. Take a couple of rounds of your lion's breath. If you've never done this with me before, stick your tongue out to your chin and a big audible breath. And if you feel like a bit of an idiot, you don't have to do it, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> Inhale, big lion's breath. So when we're ready, inhale, lift up onto the balls of the feet and slowly walk the feet towards the hands. We lengthen up, halfway lift. And then exhale, slowly begin to fold over the tops of the legs. This time we're going to take that if the fingertips, uh, the peace fingers on the toes were fine for you, stay there. If you want to go a little bit further, we're going to place the hands underneath the feet now while I pop on a light. Okay, so when we're ready, doing that same little flow of breath, we pull belly button to spine, inhale, lift up and lengthen, and exhale, float it down. And maybe you do a couple of rounds like that, or maybe you just stay here with this exploring stillness. Wherever you really start to feel that intensity, direct the breath and love that. And the exhale just lets it go. Then release the hands down towards the earth. Tuck the chin to the chest, float your way all the up, way up to Samastiti, mountain pose. Nice one guys, okay. I don't know how my mat always ends up so skewed. Okay, so when we're ready, we're gonna move on to the next side of our vinyasa. And our hands reach towards the sky. Micro bend into the knees, exhale, float your way down, forward fold. Inhale, look up and lengthen, halfway lift, flat back. Plant the hands into the earth. Either we hop, step, or jump our way back into a plank position. You can move straight to downward dog here or take any variation of vinyasa you'd like to flow with. I'm going to drop my knees for this time. Bottom to the sky and chest and chin come down. Tuck the toes and low cobra if you're moving with me. Everyone meeting back up, downward facing dog. When we're ready, right foot's going to reach towards the sky, point the toe. And maybe you just stay here with this one, lengthening through the back of that left hamstring. Or if you want, you can start to bend that top knee and just open up that right side of the body. If you want to go a little bit further than this, remember it's optional, come up onto the fingertips of the right hand, almost tenting the hand. When everyone's ready, we're going to swim that right foot forwards and step it in between the hands. Then turn the left toes out about 45 degrees and we'll prepare ourselves for a warrior one. So if you're new to the yoga practice or even if you're an experienced practitioner, it's really important to go through the steps of our alignment, making sure that our body is comfortable. So the tendency here is to end up compressing into the lower back here a little bit. So make sure that there's enough space for us to gently draw the tailbone down towards the earth. We do that by finding a nice position for the feet, the right knee over the right ankle, and grounding at the outer edge of that left foot. Reach the hands to the sky, same thing, connect the fingertips just like we did in our low lunge. Inhale, lift up and lengthen. And exhale, see if you can slow, and be really mindful with this one of how the lower back feels. If it's too much, just ease out of it, but just a gentle little twist over to the right. Nothing too intense, just lengthening through that left leg. Really opening up that left hamstring. Big breaths here, and then slowly come back to center. Reach the hands back, interlace the fingertips, either staying here, just opening up the heart, or exhale, we begin to humble our warrior, drawing the right shoulder to the right knee. 
remember all of this is optional but find a place of just accepting where the body's at today if it's feeling a bit tired then maybe ease out of this practice find a place where you can stay curious with the body slowly glide your way back up to standing we're going to straighten out that front leg and i always have to be really careful with this pose just because of my hips so I'll just invite everyone else to join me with stepping their back foot forwards a little bit, just so we can square the hips towards the front of the mat. So you can really start to feel that right hip crease drawing back because we're gonna fold over the hamstring. So little micro bend into the knee. Option here to take hold of opposite elbow or to bring the hands into reverse namaste. So just whatever's more comfortable for you really. Inhale, lengthen, pull belly button to spine. Right hip crease pulls back as we slowly fold ourselves over that right leg. Acceptance. Without this need to create a shape, just feel your way through your body. Now either you stay here or you can drop the fingertips down onto the earth and go a little bit further into the pyramid maybe lengthening a little bit more through the spine and floating your way over the top of the leg. A nice little addition to this pose is if you place the backs of the wrists or the backs of the hands onto the earth, you can get a little massage here as well, if you want that. Now when we're ready, hands are gonna come back to the hips, squeeze that orange in between the chin and the chest and come back up to standing. Now we're gonna turn both toes to the left side of the mat. I'm gonna flip around just so you don't get full bum action in that video. <clears throat> so when we're ready, we should have about a wide stance. So you might wanna widen it a little bit more than we just had in our pyramid pose. But we gently point the toes slightly in, always a little micro bend into the knees just to offer a little bit of space. Inhale, sweep the hands to the sky. Pull belly button to the spine, find this length through the spine. And then exhale, Begin to glide the hands down towards the earth. Now they don't have to reach the ground if you've got a block or a book or maybe a cushion just to offer a slightly softer practice, the, the options there. Otherwise that really nice connection to that moving meditation, inhale, lift up and lengthen, pull belly button to spine, exhale, float it down. A couple of rounds like that, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, float. One more time, inhale, look up and lengthen. And exhale, float it down. Now option here to drop the hands down to the earth if you're feeling like the hamstrings have opened a little bit more here. I really invite you to pull the tailbone up towards the sky, almost like you're pulling the sitting bones up to find even more length in the backs of the legs. Now if you have a tripod head, head stand in your practice, feel free to jump into it now. Otherwise, just staying with me here, exploring your breath, Breathing up into the belly and finding a little bit more length and softening over the tops of the legs. Then bring the hands to the hips, squeeze that orange in between the chin and the chest and just glide your way all the way up to standing. Now some of you might be in a bit of a strange position with the feet, but we're going to turn the feet back to the front of the mat. So it'll be the opposite way to the way I just, just did. And then windmill the hands down to the earth and either downward dog or to plank position, moving through your version of vinyasa. So just before you come into vinyasa, I just want you to dome through the upper back, tucking the chin to the chest, and then seeing if that makes a difference to the strength as you come down. Either rising up cobra or upward facing dog. And take a moment just to pause in child's pose. Toes come together, knees map width apart. Forehead to the ground. Just take a moment to invite some softness in the middle of this practice. Sometimes in the midst of a more fiery practice, we can lose that connection to the main focus, which is our breath. The easiest access to presence. Now I just want you to take a moment to practice a couple of rounds of Brahmani breath. Just to allow these set, subtle vibrations to settle into the body for the final part of our practice. 
Brahmi breath is like the sound of a honeybee. So we'll inhale together and then the exhale will make the noise. Hmm. So inhaling. Hmm. One more time. Hmm. So allow this moment to just kind of be the reset for the other side. Any expectations or judgments that came up on the other side about the flexibility of the body or the openness of the body, we just let it go and allow this practice to unfold as it should do. When we're ready, wave the body back up into a downward dog. Take a moment just to settle the body there maybe adding some gentle movement and reaching left foot up to the sky when you feel comfortable. Either staying here, just exploring, opening up through the right hamstring, or maybe bending through the top leg as we draw that left foot towards the right sitting bone. Either we stay here or we begin to tense the left fingertips and open up the left side of the body a little bit more. With an exhale, start to hug the left knee in towards the chest and step that left foot forward. Slowly preparing the body for our warrior one. So we're gonna step the back foot in slightly, turn the toes out about 45 degrees and ensure that front knee is stacked over the ankle. Reach the hands up towards the sky. Now I just want you to take a moment to pause in your warrior one, close off the eyes and really bring awareness to every sensation that goes on in the body, how the feet are positioned, how the legs feel, is there any tenderness in the lower back? Are you wobbling or falling over like me as you do that? And then once you've kind of found this place of accepting everything that's going on in the body, bring the fingertips together, lengthen the mat towards the sky, soften the shoulders away from the ears, and as the exhale, we slowly begin to twist the body over towards the left. Keep grounding with the outer edge of that left foot for an even more length. And then slowly come back to centre. We're going to start to straight. Oh, I forgot something. Sorry. We'll bring the hands back behind us, interlace the fingertips, draw them down towards the earth, open up the heart here. That will micro bend into the elbows as we float our way forwards, if you'd like. Maybe you can skip this out. Humble your warrior as left shoulder draws in towards the left knee. And this is a beautiful pose for us, fostering acceptance and humbleness in its nature. So ready, rising back up. And then start to straighten out that front leg as you come up. Walk the back foot in slightly if that suits your body. Remember, everybody's different and you might actually work a little bit better with them wider. But as we come into pyramid, preparing our hands, either taking hold of opposite elbow or reverse namaste. Stay soft in the shoulders, soft in the jaw, as you slowly begin to glide the body forwards over the legs, drawing the left hip crease back the whole time as you float forwards. Thinking about the length in the spine and how the breath helps you here. What qualities does each inhale offer you here? What space can we create? If you would like, you can release the hands and drop the fingertips to the earth. Stay active with the fingertips and maybe go deeper or maybe place the backs of the hands onto the earth just to get a nice little stretch for the wrists. For you guys that have been working at computers all day, this one will feel pretty good. Then when we're ready, coming back up onto the fingertips, we're going to turn both toes to the right side of the mat. And then inhale, look up and lengthen. Take hold of the peace fingers, and if you can, nice bend in the knees, wrap them around your big toes. And then you can either just stay here exploring in your, in your own way or finding a little bit more length with the movement of your breath. I find that this little dynamic movement meditation just really helps me to stay grounded and be still in the poses once you settle.
And then once we've taken a couple of breaths here, releasing the hands, squeeze that orange underneath the chin and slowly bring your way all the way up to standing. Okay, so we're just gonna heel, heel toe the feet all the way into the center and then you're just gonna turn to the screen again instead of getting you guys to another vinyasa, which I'm sure you appreciate. <laughs> so we're gonna, this is the pose that we've been building up towards. And you may have done this version maybe in a more reclined position, but we kind of do these sorts of poses as a variation a lot in yoga. So this is why I got you to take the scarf. So I'm gonna show you from the side and then I can show you from the front. So firstly, if you're working with a scarf, you're gonna place the foot into the scarf or the strap. And then just with one hand, maybe the right hand or the left, whichever is more comfortable for you, I'd recommend taking the left hand onto the hip. You can extend it forwards. For those of you that are working with the fingertips, I'll show you a couple of other variations as well. You're gonna wrap the peace fingers around the big toe and then extend the foot forwards like this. And remember, you can pop a little micro bend into the knee. So those are the two variations. Now have a little play with which one you're gonna go with and then we'll practice together, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate with the fingertips around the toe. We're gonna wrap them around. And if you've got a scarf, it's the same variation. And then we're gonna extend the foot out in front of us. Now offer some kindness to the body, maybe not extending the leg as far as you can go, bending it a little bit more so that we can straighten out that left leg a little bit and pull belly button to spine, finding that core strength. Now either you stay here or maybe you start to bring that foot out towards the right hand side. Now I'm gonna turn around and show you guys from this angle. So maybe you start to turn it out a little bit more if you've got the strap as well. You can do that exact same movement. Now remember this is a home practice and I realize I'm talking quite a bit while I'm doing this. So if you at any point you wanna come out, feel free to come out. This is really gonna be beautiful for those hamstrings. Remember your breath. Find your drishti, your point of gaze. And then slowly releasing back down to the earth. Okay, so just take a moment to shake out the legs. I know that that one can be a really tough one for that left glute or hip, so just let it go. Release the strap to the earth and then just bring the hands up wide and just begin a little flop from side to side. Nice bend in the knees and just letting go of anything that came up on that side. Any negativity about yourself and just allow this next side to be fun and for it to be part of this beautiful journey of us getting to know our bodies and its limitations a little bit more. So when we're ready, either taking our scarf or taking our two piece fingers. So we're now coming onto the left foot. We'll place the scarf underneath the foot if we're practicing with a scarf. And then if you're ready, we're gonna start to extend that left leg out in front of us. Now the right hand to the hip offers us a little bit of support. We can pull the belly button to the spine and find that length up through the crown of the head. Now you can just stay here if that's enough for you. And just uh, uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, sorry guys, I'm well wobbly today. And e or either you can start to bring that left foot out to the side. Keep this nice tautness in between the strap and the hand and remember your breath wherever you are. Remember that awareness of every other part of the body where we start to hold tension, maybe in the jaw. Smile when we fall and when we wobble. And when we're ready, slowly softening back down to the earth. Whew. Good work guys, I know that one's a tough one. Okay, so we're gonna start to point the toes out and we're gonna start to bend the knees, coming down into yogi squat malasana. Now, if this is too much for the knees already, maybe you can come to seated and pop the feet onto the earth like that, or pop blocks underneath the, the heels, otherwise bringing the hands into heart center. Press the, uh, the elbows to the inner thighs and gently just begin to extend up through the crown of the head. Take a moment to just close off the eyes and just enjoy this moment where the practice begins to slow down. Oh yes, thank you. Either you stay here, or you can start to extend the hands forward a little bit more. Sorry guys, one second, I just got to mute someone. 
<laughs> or you can reach the fingertips forwards and allow the chin to drop towards the chest. And then slowly, bottom comes, step back down to the ground. And we'll reach our feet out in front. Okay, so this is a really beautiful time for you to now explore the hamstrings without this need to force. We've kind of been warming up to them. So maybe it's a time to just offer a little bit of kindness to the body. I always tend to practice Paschimottanasana or this forward fold with a little support underneath the knees to encourage me to create a little bit more space in the spine when we fold forward. And if this is too much for you, you can also pop a cushion underneath the bottom as well. Otherwise, inhale, sweep the hands to the sky. The exhale slowly comes as we float the hands down towards the earth. Remember, it's pulling the belly button towards the upper thighs and maintaining this nice length in the spine. And naturally here, we all have this tendency to be like, mm -hmm, I wanna get as far forward as I can. Offer yourself this kindness and really listen to where we're trying to breathe to, where we're trying to open up. Sometimes without realizing when we're forcing the body, we can be putting more strain on the lower back. So tap into that natural curiosity in the body. Tap into that tenderness or tightness. And you may or may not know, but the thighs in astrological terms are quite heavily linked to movement and our freedom of creativity. So this area is really important for us to feel as if we're free. And at the moment, it can be a bit more challenging. So you might have that stagnation in creativity. Think about how we can breathe into this area, which we need so much for our movement. Slowly releasing from the forward fold and walking the hands back towards the body. Okay, so we're now gonna bring the feet out wide. I'm just gonna turn to you for you to have a better view. I'm just gonna tilt the screen a little bit here. So bring the feet out wide. So we've got that wide leg stance again. Now again, if you need to pop a cushion underneath the sitting bones, if the spine feels as if it's really uncomfortable here, please take these options just to ease the body in. Otherwise, we're gonna come into a little half butterfly. So bring the right, sorry, the left foot to the inside of that right leg. Inhale, sweep the hands to the sky and keep that uh, right foot flexed. Instead of bowing towards that foot, we're actually gonna bow forwards in front of us. And you should immediately start to feel that in the hamstring and you might even feel it in the outer hip. Take a moment just to soften here. Find length through the crown of the head and breath into the back of that right hamstring. and slowly walk the hands back towards the body. We're gonna place the right hand to the outside of that right leg and reach left hand up and over, just like we did at the beginning, that lateral movement with the spine, the softness of the shoulders and the jaw. Exhale, sweep the hands forwards and drop the left hand behind you. Right hand's gonna reach up and over. Lift the hips to the sky. Exhale, glide your way forwards. Right hand to the earth, left hand up and over. Keep the core engaged with this whole movement. Exhale, sweep it forward. Inhale, lift it up. One more time. Exhale, bow it forward. Inhale, rise. And slowly come back up to center. Extend both feet out in front of you. Now connect the fingertips like that little orb. Pull belly button to spine. Draw sitting bones together. Find this inner fire all the way at the base of the body and then slowly releasing hands back down. Now start to bring the right foot to the inside of the left leg. Keep the foot super engaged, drawing the toes towards the face. If you need a little micro bend, feel free. Otherwise, inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, bow it forward, half butterfly. Now the way that we really begin to protect the important parts of the body, like the spine and the knees, is the engagement and not just passively falling into our poses so still requiring that little bit of effort even in our cool downs it's the engagement of the feet the pulling of the belly button towards the spine and slowly start to walk the hands over to the outside of the leg 
sweep the right hand up and over. Find that inner strength. Exhale, float it forwards. Inhale, lift the hips to the sky. Exhale, wave it forwards, that dynamic breath. And then find your flow just for a couple of rounds. Maybe even get creative. You can float the hands in whichever way feels good for you. And then slowly floating back down to the ground. Bring the hands back up to centre. And then we're going to bring both feet together. So you can drop the hands to the earth while you do that movement. You don't need to keep them up towards the sky. Okay, so take a moment to bring the soles of the feet together and a nice little space we're offering in between the pelvis and the feet. So two hands stacked on top of each other is a nice way to go about it. Then either you bring the hands over the top and just gently walk them forwards at these little tented fingertips to open up through the outer hips or you can thread the hands underneath and maybe bring them around the feet. Whichever position you're in, honoring where the body's at today and these final little limitations these resistances that the body has that are the messages to either ease out or to go a little bit deeper into the body. And when you're ready, one more big breath. Maybe observe the rise of the breath across the back and the exhale, the softening of the skin and the clothes across the body. And you're ready, slowly walk the hands back towards the center. Bring the feet together. And I'm, I'm starting to demonstrate this one a little bit more. So lucky you guys, always getting core work. Reach your hands forwards, start slightly curl the spine, almost like you're hugging that orange in between the chin and the chest and then nice little bit of core activation as we slowly begin slowly getting better at this one guys slowly floating our way back to the ground when we're ready extending the feet to the end of the mat and feel free because it has been a hamstring practice if you've got access to a wall it's a nice way to finish off the practice you can always come to shavasana with legs up the wall if it's easy for you to find it's a really nice restorative way to finish off and allow the weight of the female bones just to melt into the hip sockets if you don't have a wall that's absolutely fine and always take whatever props or whatever comfy things you'd like to just support the end of your practice and to support your body in a nurturing way And just to enter into the state of stillness, take a big breath in through the nose, a big exhale, sigh and let it go. Inhale, feel it. And exhale, let it go. And just one more round like that on your own. Heaviness comes from hanging on tightly to emotions that were always meant to be ephemeral. It is not easy to let go, especially when all we know is attachment. We want things to last forever and we turn difficult moments into long lasting pain simply because we have not learned to let go. We have not learned that the beauty of living comes from the movement of change. Letting go does not mean that we forget, and it does not mean that we give up. It just means that we are not letting our present happiness be determined by the things that happened in the past or by things we wish to happen in the future. Thank you. 
And the mind will naturally wonder, even in these points of stillness, where we might expect ourselves to be calmer or quieter. Again, it's all the process. The first stage is accepting where we're at, what's happening in the present moment. When we're ready, slowly begin to bring your awareness back into the space. A gentle wiggle of the fingers, a wiggle of the toes. Now feel free if you're with the legs up the wall, if this is really working for you to stay there while we come to the end of the practice. Otherwise, if you'd like to join us, gently turn the body over to the right hand side. pressing the hands into the earth and just making your way up to a seated position. And just taking a moment to unite this vibration that we all share, even though sometimes we can feel really disconnected from the people around us or our community. When we're ready, bringing the hands into heart center and just placing the thumbs against the heart for a moment. And connecting to that unified prana, our life force and our breath. Inhale deeply. Exhale, sigh out. Inhale together and exhale for on. bowing the chin to the hands from my beating heart to yours the light in me sees and honors the light in you namaste thanks everyone hope you had a lovely practice i've unmuted you all now so if anyone's got questions or anything feel free to stay otherwise thank you all for being here um I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week. Namaste. Thank you, Georgie. Thank you, Georgie. Thank you. Thank you.